Hey friends, it's Jen and I'm back with another layout process for All Too New. Today I wanted to show you how you can make kind of a holiday looking wreath with um, seemingly springy kind of stamps and dies. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to combine two different floral stamp sets. I have Rose Spray and Peaceful Reverie and I am going to use these two stamp sets to create a um, floral wreath that's for a Christmas layout. So um, I'm also going to use the spring shower cover die because I think a lot of these pieces, the especially these little um, kind of ferny looking pieces, will look great added to the wreath. So uh, I'm going to be doing that. I have a bunch of scrap paper to stamp on and I've chosen a color scheme here. So you can see that I have lots of reds, a little bit of green. I wanted to add some blue in here so I'm using the new um, kind of grayish blue set of inks. Tranquility I think is what it's called from Alta New and then I'm also using a few from the Fall Harvest set as well just for some flower centers but um, I'm going to make a holiday wreath out of these colors and these stamps. So I'm going to stamp a whole bunch of stuff. I'll show you a little bit but I won't make you watch the whole thing because um, I think we can get the idea of the stamping. I want to focus more on building the wreath. Alright, so like I mentioned, I have a bunch of scrap pieces of paper and I'm going to use my stamp press to stamp a whole bunch of leaves and flowers and I'm using the colors from my color palette and one thing that I do want to point out, and I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video too, is that I am creating some that are light, some that are dark. Um, I want a variety of colors and a variety of um, kind of strengths of color because that will help me achieve balance and so um, I I also want to mention too I do use that blue color I I use blue and green here but if you wanted your uh, wreath or your floral piece to look really icy and wintry you could just use the blue and I think it's really really pretty so I am just trying to utilize all of the space that I have here and pulling various stamps from the two stamp sets that I started with. Um, I'll actually add in stamps from a study in watercolor a little bit later uh, to fill in some spaces, but for now I'm just using these two flower or er, two stamp sets. And now I'm stamping the flowers in various red tones. Okay, so I've stamped and cut out a ton of flowers and I wanted to show you something before I get started on building the wreath. And I think it's important when you're making when you're making a wreath or some a whole thing with a whole bunch of flowers to have variety to make it look um, pretty and natural is to have light stuff and dark stuff. So I have these darker flowers. Um, these are even darker, just the small ones. I have leaves in uh, dark colors, in lighter colors. These are the ones that I die cut from that cover die, the spring garden, or what is it called? Spring shower. Um, and then I also stamped some lighter things. So this is the same flower. I just stamped it, um, I only stamped one of the layers and I stamped it in light blue so that gives it kind of a white feeling. You can use gray as well but the um, blue or the gray will act as a shadow instead of a color and this one I did the same thing. I just stamped one of the layers in the light blue so it kind of looks like a white flower. So um, here's my different variety. You can see there's different lengths, different um, sizes and I'm going to play with these and see if I have everything I need to create my wreath. So now it's time to get started on the wreath and I decide to just kind of freehand a little circle, not a little circle, a big circle with my pencil and I'm going to start with the larger pieces first. I find that it it works really well to start with the big pieces and then fill in. So I'm starting with the flowers and the bigger leaves and then kind of just building around. Now you probably noticed from the beginning of the video that I end up making this into, I guess it's still kind of a wreath, but I make it go to the edges of the page. Um, 
but I wanted to keep this in so that you could, well, of course it, it begins this way and, and this is part of the layout, but I wanted to show you that you can create a simple wreath like this. And I think looking at it now on the video, it probably could have used maybe just a couple more things and, and I could have kept it kind of a light and airy wreath, but I really wanted a full look. And so what I'm doing here is I grabbed my uh, study and watercolor dies and I thought maybe I can just cut out some leaves and not worry about stamping but just use the dies to uh, create some filler and I was liking this so I went ahead and cut out a couple of different kinds of these leaves from the study uh, study in watercolor stamp set and I'm going to cut some out in blue as well I actually cut them that way so that I could flip them uh, because I wanted to have the leaves in both orientations, but I will actually use some blue ones. So uh, you'll see that here too. Uh, I'm also trying to decide if I want to use that long uh, piece as just, it, it was the die that fits around that big long stamp, but I wanted to see if it would work well as just the uh, leaf piece. So I'm cutting that out in some lighter green. I thought it might be nice to add in a pop of that kind of brighter green. I'm just using cardstock scraps from my stash for this. Um, and I do like the pop of brighter green. And so I cut a few more things out of that in uh, a minute here. What I wanted to try was to see if I stamped just one layer of that longer um, leaf stamp if it looked good when I stamped it on it and I did like it so I stamp it again on some paper and I am going to die cut it out after I stamp it it's much easier that way for me and um, I'm still gonna stamp on the ones I already cut out but I think that this looks really cool so if you're looking for a little bit more variety in your uh, layout or in your wreath try stamping on colored cardstock because it really gives you a different kind of look. So I'm stamping a bunch of leaves on this light green cardstock. Sorry, I'm a little out of frame there. Um, but I'm just simply stamping um, with that dark green. I think it's called evergreen ink. I'll have everything linked in the video description as well as over on the blog post. So I decide to use that evergreen ink and stamp on the watercolor a study in watercolor dyes that I also cut out and I'm doing blue and I'm doing green here and I think that these turn out really cute again I like the subtle um it's more subtle than stamping on white but you still get some more definition so you'll see it, it better in the close-up photos I feel like right now on the video it's hard to see especially those dark green ones but they have that kind of lighter green outline from the cardstock and the ink is a little bit darker so it looks really nice. So now I'm going to cut these out and uh, add these to my wreath. I kind of struggled getting a perfect circle. I think I was being a little bit too picky um, and I'm going to mess around with this wreath a lot. So I'm going to kind of show you how I lay it out. And then I did a lot of fussing, so I'm going to skip through some of that uh, so you don't have to watch me fussing around. But again, mostly what I'm doing here after I get all of my pieces cut uh, is going to be kind of trying to find a balance. I want to make sure that they're, um, that the red flowers are all in one spot, that I have a, a good balance of color and again, uh, the weight of the color. So those dark green leaves are a lot heavier. So here's where I've I've kind of glued some of these down and this is my first version of the wreath and looking at it right now it looks great. So I should have just left it like this and it would have been fine. There are a few spaces that felt a little sparse to me and so that's what I'm trying to do now is kind of fix that. And so I'm going in with these uh, little tiny ferns that I had uh, cut from that spring uh, shower cover die and they're going to make nice filler. I actually don't end up using any of the green ones that I cut and you'll see why a little bit later but I'm going to end up cutting them out in gold and they add a really nice pop uh, to the wreath. 
So this part is slowed down a bit so you can just see how I'm kind of, I don't know, perusing, <laughs> not perusing, but I'm just kind of like taking the pieces and kind of adding them in here and there to kind of give a little bit of detail to this and to just to see if I like the way that things look when I put them in uh, certain areas. So I, I really do like this and I think these little pieces just really add a lot of detail. But at this point is kind of where I'm going to, um, I don't know, I go crazy cutting more stuff and then I decided I didn't want the light green. I decided against that, but I'm going to change my mind in just a minute. So I'll come back here and you'll see that I've added some of the green in and I'm just cutting those leaves apart and kind of tucking them. And I really do like the way that those green uh, leaves pop and it also helps to fill out the wreath. So one thing that I'm doing to make sure it's more circular is I'm turning my paper because sometimes it looks more circular from one side than another. And so if you turn your paper while you're doing it, then you will get a better circle. Um, at that point, I decided I wanted to add more. So basically what I did was I just cut, stamped and cut a bunch more flowers and I just glued them all the way to the edges. And you can see that they're all going off the edges. I just trimmed them up. And here's where I have decided to add in those little fern pieces in gold. So I just used some gold mirror cardstock and uh, cut that spring shower cover die out of gold. And it looks, it just gives the perfect little pop and it makes it a little bit more festive. So using the reds and greens here really does make it feel holiday-ish to me. And those peaceful reverie flowers, they do look they're not really, but they kind of look like poinsettias to me. And so I thought um, that this worked well for kind of a different take on a holiday layout. So if you have a bunch of floral stamp sets like I do from All to New, you can mix and match them up and just create a gorgeous background like this. It is a labor of love, but it's something that I enjoy doing. So it wasn't bad. I listened to an audiobook and just sat and um, stamped and die cut and if you do it all at once you can get it done quicker. So I'm just continuing to add the little gold bits in here and there and um, I'm not worrying anymore about whether the wreath is super round because it's not a wreath anymore it's just like a whole border with a circle in the middle and I really really love the way it looks like I just, I don't know, I really love it. I think this would look cute if you just put a quote in the middle of it and you could frame it. I think that would be really fun too. You could of course do the same design and not make it Christmassy um, and do whatever colors you wanted. So I also cut the words Bah Humbug in that gold card stock uh, using the tall alpha dies and I am going to use that for my title. So I will put that on, I'm going to pop it up on some foam and I'm gonna skip through me adding the foam because it takes forever, <laughs> it takes a little while. Um, and I'm also going to use one little stamp from the Faceted Stars stamp set and it says holiday something. Um, <laughs> anyway, I went ahead and adhered my title and I'm going to stamp that, I think it's, what does it say? Holiday season. Um, I just wanted a little something stamped above my title. And so I really like the way that looks. And this is just a silly photo of my daughter doing her little frowny face. <laughs> she does it all the time. Uh, I'm drawing some lines for my journaling and I'm drawing the lines so that they kind of nestle around the flowers which I think is a nice way to help it feel like it's incorporated. I don't always draw lines for my journaling, but I have a hard time writing straight, so I definitely did it this time. I thought about typing up my journaling, but after doing all this work, I just didn't want to do anything that was going to add more. <laughs> so um, I have these little wood buttons from the Live Your Dream collection, and there are two green ones. And so I'm pulling those out, and I also have one that I had taken the center out to use for something. So it doesn't have a center, and I'm going to put a red enamel dot in the center of that one. So now I have these three wood buttons to kind of embellish with. The, the outside is so um, 
festive and full that I don't need a lot, but I just wanted a little something to um, add to the center here. So I will end up using those three enamel dots, but or three wood buttons, but I couldn't quite decide where to put them. So I decided to write out my journaling first. And I'm just writing on those lines, talking about how my daughter always pulls this face, like whether she, she <laughs> pulls this face when she's doing um, dancing to her jam or <laughs> when she is fake mad at me or when I try to take a picture of her and she pulled this face the other day and it just reminded me of Scrooge or you know like saying bah humbug like she's just grumpy um, but she also we decided she also looked like the old guy from Up the movie Up <laughs> um, Mr. I can't remember his name now but She's so funny. She's just silly. Um, and I just wanted to capture that story. So now I'm kind of sprinkling some enamel dots in with these uh, little wood buttons. And I like the way that looks. I think it helps me to kind of figure out where to put them and fill in the space. Uh, there are a few. This is like one of those. This is going to be completely full kind of layouts. And so there are a few white spaces that are sort of bothering me and I'm trying to decide what can I do there. Um, I've looked through all of my all to new kind of um, embellishments and stuff that I have and I've already done so much stamping that I just wanted something simple. So I remembered that I had these little gold snowflake stickers sitting on my desk. So I just grabbed a couple of them and filled in the spaces. Uh, those are just from my stash and I really like the way that this turned out. So as a finishing touch, I added some antique gold uh, splatters here, and that is going to complete this layout. Again, a labor of love, but I just love the way that it turned out. I think it's super cute. My daughter told me that she wishes I would have just kept it a wreath. She liked it better that way. Um, which way do you like it? Did you like it before I added all of those <laughs> extra flowers? Um, I hope that you'll try something like this and that you're inspired to use your floral stamps for a holiday layout or card. And thank you so much for watching. Be sure to head over to the blog for more information and the photos. And if you're not a subscriber to the Alta New channel, be sure to hit subscribe so that you can uh, get tons of inspiration every week from all of the amazing, talented people on the design team. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.